Ever wondered why some people score high in ILT's writing while others struggle? It's a question that often puzzles many. ILT's writing is a crucial component of the exam, yet it's a hurdle for a significant number of candidates. The challenge lies not just in mastering English, but also in understanding the unique demands of the test. That's where we come in. We're here to simplify the ILT's writing process and guide you on your path to success. Stay tuned as we unravel the secret to acing ILT's writing. To conquer IELTS writing, you first need to understand what it entails. In the realm of IELTS writing, there are two tasks you'll be asked to undertake. Task 1 and Task 2. Task 1 is all about report writing, where you'll be provided a graphic and asked to describe, summarize or explain the information in your own words. You might see line graphs, bar charts, pie charts, tables or diagrams. You'll need to pen down at least 150 words within 20 minutes. Then there's task two, where you'll need to showcase your prowess in essay writing. You'll be presented with a topic and asked to write an essay in response. This could be an argument, a discussion, or a problem-solving exercise. Here, you'll need to write at least 250 words and you'll have 40 minutes to do so. Now that we know what IELTS writing is, how do we ace it? Task one might seem daunting, but with the right approach, it's a piece of cake. First, let's talk about understanding the question. This is the foundation of your response, and it's essential that you know what is being asked of you. Read the question carefully, underline keywords, and make sure you understand what type of data or situation is presented. Is it a chart, a process, a map? Once you've identified this, you're ready to move on to the next step. Next, it's time to plan your answer. Don't underestimate the importance of this step. A well-planned answer is a well-structured answer. So take a few minutes to jot down your main points and ideas. Identify the key trends or features in the data or situation given. Think about how you can logically organize these points into an introduction, body paragraphs, and a conclusion. Now let's move on to writing the introduction. This is where you set the stage for your examiner. Summarize the main trends or features in a sentence or two. Be careful not to include specific details or numbers here. Remember, this is just an overview. Then you'll write the body of your response. This is where you delve into the details. Use the plan you made earlier to guide you. Discuss the main trends or features you've identified, using data to support your points. Be sure to vary your language and sentence structure to showcase your range of vocabulary and grammatical structures. Finally, you'll wrap it all up with a conclusion. Here, you'll summarize the main points you've discussed in your body paragraphs. Just like in the introduction, you shouldn't introduce any new data or specific details here. Once you've written your response, take a few minutes to review it. Check for any grammatical or spelling errors. Make sure your paragraphs flow logically and that you've fully answered the question. With these steps, task one becomes a manageable task. But what about task two? Task two, an essay, can be a breeze with the right strategy. So let's go over a step-by-step -step guide to acing this task. First off, you need to understand the topic. It's crucial because if you misunderstand the question, it could lead to a poorly structured essay. Take a moment to read the question carefully, underline keywords, and ensure you fully grasp what's being asked. Next up, brainstorming ideas. This is the time to let your mind wander. Think about the topic from different angles. What are the pros and cons? What are the causes and effects? Or perhaps what are the problems and solutions? Don't censor your ideas at this stage, just let them flow. Once you've got your ideas, it's time to plan the essay structure. A well-structured essay makes it easier for the examiner to follow your thoughts. A typical structure could be four to five paragraphs, an introduction, two to three body paragraphs, and a conclusion. Now let's talk about writing the introduction. This is your chance to make a good first impression. It should introduce the topic and give a general overview of what will follow. Make it clear, concise and engaging. Next, your body paragraphs. Each paragraph should focus on one main idea, supported by relevant examples or evidence. Start with a topic sentence, explain your point, provide evidence, and then summarize it in a concluding sentence. Finally, the conclusion. This is your chance to wrap up your essay neatly. Summarize your main points and give a final thought on the topic. Remember, no new information should be introduced in the conclusion. After finishing your essay, it's time to review. Check your grammar, spelling, punctuation, and make sure your essay flows smoothly. 
Pay attention to the word count as well, it should be at least 250 words. There you have it, a simple guide to acing task 2. Now let's recap. So, we've discussed the ins and outs of Ilt's writing, shall we do a quick recap? Our journey began with understanding the Ilt's writing test, its structure and objectives. We delved into the importance of coherence, vocabulary and grammar, and how these elements contribute to your overall score. Then we took a detailed look at task 1. We spoke about the need to describe and interpret information presented in various forms. We emphasized the key steps, understanding the task, planning your response, writing it, and then reviewing your work. Subsequently, we explored task 2, an essay-based challenge. We reiterated the importance of understanding the question, brainstorming ideas, planning your essay, writing it, and finally reviewing it for any potential errors. Remember, clear communication is the goal, not showcasing highfalutin language. Now let's talk about some final tips. Practice, as we've said, is paramount. Engage with diverse topics, write regularly and seek feedback. Reviewing past papers is a tried and true method to understand the exam pattern and the types of questions you might face. But above all, maintain a calm and positive mindset. The IELTS writing test is not a measure of your worth, but a test of your English language skills. It's okay to make mistakes, that's part of the learning process. Remember, practice makes perfect. With the right approach and consistent effort, you can ace Eelt's writing. Good luck!